This is what I'm talking about. Tennessee Titans picking up Bud Dupree. That's a big W for the Tennessee Titans. Now we got somebody opposite of Landry that can pass, that can rush the passer. We also got Archery, who used to play for the Colts. Two of the last, I think, three or four years, Archery has had double digit sacks. You mix Archery in with Simmons, in with Landry, and with now Bud Dupree at, I believe, $16.5 million for Dupree. I think this front seven is going to look a lot better than last year's front seven. I think Rashawn Evans, another year with another defensive coordinator, makes it even better, makes another leap. I don't think you can judge him so much on last year's productivity, largely because two years ago, he was a pretty dang good inside linebacker. Then you come up with this year, and you got Vrabel calling plays, you got Bowen calling plays, then you're going back to Vrabel calling plays. You, you can't expect people to just be able to really succeed in that. And, you know, and I think that goes for Kevin Byard. I think that goes for what would have been a Joey Jackson. I think that also goes with guys like, I mean, even Brown didn't have that great of a year, you know. I think that also goes with Simmons and everything else. I think this year, the the acquisitions of Bud Dupree would be very good. I called it last year. Vic Beasley, the Gavion Clowney were complete bust for fucking picks. I said the Gavion Clowney would not live up to his potential. People sitting here saying... Oh, he'll get he'll get five plus sacks. He'll get this many sacks. I said this dude probably won't even get a sack within the first four games of last year. And he didn't even get a sack at all. I think he played in like six, seven, or eight games. And he did not get one single sack. Listen, holies and pressures, they're great, but when are you gonna turn them into sacks? You gotta turn them into sacks, into yards of loss. Clowney wasn't doing that last year for us. I am totally okay with spending $16.5 million on Dupree because every single year with Cameron Wake, Vic Beasley, Clowney, and stuff like that, we've been putting little band-aids on the wound that is the no pass was. We got, we, got, we got to whip the band-aid off and we just might as well just pour the alcohol in there and get it fixed. You know, if it works, it works. If it don't, okay, well then yeah, that sucks. But at least you can sit here and say, we're throwing money at players that most likely can succeed. When we were just filling in little holes here and there with players that they're not really going to excel. They're not really going to do great. They're just a little, a little, here we go. We'll just put this here for now, a little band-aid here for now, and ho and come in and dress it at, an, at another time and everything. In a pass first league, you can't do that with pass rushes. You got to whip that band-aid off and get the elite guys, get the very good guys. Like I said, Archery is going to make Simmons better with both of those two going to make Landry and Bud Dupree even better. Now, the only issue I got is, can Bud Dupree get back fully healthy for practice, training camp, and yada, yada, yada? We're going to see about that, okay? We're going to see about that. Now, this turns our attention to the NFL draft. Now, what was a big need in edge rusher, now the big need is going to be wide receiver or cornerback. Where are we going to go? Do we go wide receiver? Do we go Bateman? Do we go more in, f in the first round? Or do we hope that maybe one of those guys can kind of maybe slide down into the second round and then maybe we have to jump up? Or do we trade back, uh, you know, a handful of picks or so and still get more? Elijah Moore, watch that name. Elijah Moore is very good. Very good. I would almost be willing to take him at 22, just depending on how the wide receiver room is taken out on draft day and stuff like that. Obviously, Waddle, obviously, Chase, obviously, Smitty, they're gone. They're gone within the first 15 picks. They're gone. They're out. So, who comes off the board after them 
and when do they come off the board after them? Does Kadarius Tony come off the board quick? Does Bateman come off the board quick? If that does, then that's gonna shake. That's gonna force our hand on if we are going to draft a wide receiver, and where are we gonna draft a wide receiver and when? If not, is a guy like J.C. Horn gonna be there at twenty-two? Listen, J.C. Horn is a top three corner in this draft. Patrick Sertan's one, Farley's second, with Horn being number three. And then I think there's a little bit of a drop-off after Horn, and I just don't know if you can get a legitimate good corner in the second round for that value at sec in the second round. So I think maybe, I think you may most likely maybe go with J.C. Horn, and you just kind of see where you're at. But the issue is, is, I think we have to go wide receiver first round. Main, if we do stay at 22. Mainly because we let go of Adam Humphreys and Corey Davis. So, tell me what you think in the comments. Let me know. Tighten up.